Hi, third grade. Welcome back to a continuation of Unit 2, Lesson 6. We are going to be reading Chapter 7 from our reader today. So go ahead and get your student reader. You will also need activity book, page 6.3. It looks like this. So be sure to get activity book 6.3 and your reader in front of you. And you're going to follow along and what we're going to do on Phibian's web on page 6.3 is pick out the main ideas from this chapter. I'm going to do several with you and you're going to do some on your own. So let's take a look at chapter 7, Amphibians. Greetings once again from your pal and animal expert, Rattenborough. Are you ready to learn about another group of animals within the animal kingdom? The group we are going to talk about today is really interesting. They live both in water and on land. This group of animals is called amphibians. The word amphibian comes from the Latin meaning both sides of life. Amphibians are classified into three more specific groups. Frogs and toads are the largest group. Salamanders and newts make up another. Animals in the third group do not have legs, so they look more like large snakes. We don't know as much about this group of amphibians because they live mostly underground. So there were a couple of really important ideas from that page, boys and girls. The first one that really sticks out to me is telling us what an amphibian is. Amphibians live both in water and on land. Now you can't underline in your reader, but what we can do is write that on our chart, on our web. So I'm going to go ahead and do it like this. You can hold it however you want to. I'm going to write live both on land and in water. And if you put water first, land second, that's okay too. Let's go back here. Um, another thing that I think is important to know is that amphibians are classified into three specific groups. We have three specific groups. We have frogs and toads, salamanders, and newts. Actually, salamanders and newts are another group. And then there's a third one that they don't really give us a name for. So I'm going to put here three groups. And I'm actually going to put frog and toad are the largest. Let's keep going. On this page, as we read, boys and girls, there are two important main ideas. I want you to listen as I read and see if you can pick out one or two of those main ideas. To understand the life cycle of an amphibian, let's take a closer look at an American toad. Like all amphibians, toads are cold-blooded. An amphibian's body temperature changes as the outdoor temperature changes. Some amphibians hibernate during the winter. Some toads dig deep underground. Other amphibians, like frogs, bury themselves in mud at the bottom of a pond. Hibernating amphibians can survive for months. They do not eat or move, using only the fat stored in their body to stay alive. Frogs and toads, and all amphibians, are also vertebrates. There's actually maybe three main ideas that you could get from this. Did any of you get excited when I read the first sentence in the second paragraph, like all amphibians, toads are cold-blooded? So what we could write on our chart, we could write that they are cold-blooded. What is something else that you found in that on that page? 
I think it's important to note that some hibernate. Some hibernate. Yes, I bet some of you picked that right out. And there was one more main idea, big idea, about this group of animals. And it was at the very end. Yes, they are vertebrates. Amphibians are vertebrates. So let's write vertebrates. They have a backbone. Excellent. Let's keep going here. So the last couple of pages I'm going to read to you and I want you to pick out the rest of the main ideas, which was two that we didn't fill in. I want you to pick out two more big ideas from the remaining pages as I read. A toad's life cycle begins as one of thousands of soft, slimy eggs. The mother lays her eggs close to shore in a pond, lake, or calm spot in a river or stream. But most of these eggs will never hatch. Instead, they will be eaten by fish or other animals. If the water moves the eggs away from the shore and into direct sunlight, the eggs will dry out and die. Out of the thousands of eggs laid, a few hundred toad eggs manage to hatch into tadpoles. A tadpole is very fragile. Its young body is made up mainly of a mouth, a tail, and gills. At this stage, tadpoles are aquatic. Like fish, they use gills to breathe underwater. If you think there's something important from this page, please write it on your paper now. And here's the life cycle of a frog or toad. We start with eggs, move on to the next stage is tadpoles. Then we have a young amphibian here, and finally adult. Again, on this page, listen to see if there's anything important that you need to add to your web. After a while, a tadpole after a while, tadpoles begin swimming around and eating tiny aquatic plants. Tadpoles tend to stay together in schools like fish. However, this makes it more likely that other animals will be able to catch and eat them. Most tadpoles end up as fish snacks. If a tadpole survives for a month, skin will begin to grow over its gills. After about six to nine weeks, the tadpole also starts to grow little legs. As its body changes, the young frog or toad starts to look less like an aquatic animal and more like a land animal. After a few months, a toad will make its way out of the water to land. At this stage, it may still have a tail, but that won't last long. By this time, its gills have become lungs. That means the toad now breathes oxygen from the air instead of oxygen from the water, like fish. Soon, it will be a full-grown adult toad living and hopping around on land. Adult amphibians are carnivores eating insects, small reptiles, and even mice. So is there an, are there any big ideas on this page that you would like to add to your web? Here we have a young amphibian leaving the pond for land. That's down here at the bottom. And here at the top is again the, a picture of the life cycle of a frog or a toad. Adult toads are very good swimmers and can even swim underwater. But they cannot use their lungs to breathe underwater. Instead, their thin, moist skin absorbs oxygen from the water. Amphibians are a very interesting animal group. Amphibians are the only type of animal that have both gills and lungs. As adults, they live on land but lay eggs in the water. The Latin meaning of the word amphibian makes perfect sense. Make sure all the spokes on your amphibian web are filled in and you will submit that to me.